This is Pat Solver with the Dr. Ways In, and we're filming at the M Health Summit, the 2014 M Health Summit in Washington, D.C. And I have with me this morning, it's my pleasure to have a conversation with Harry Leiter, who's the Chief Medical Officer for Walgreens. Did I get that right? Yes, uh, thanks for the opportunity, Pat. Well, you gave an absolutely fantastic keynote speech this morning. And the reason why it really resonated with me is because you were talking, you were calling the question on value. Right, what is right. the value sure. of M Health? Um, and not only what is the value, but the value to whom? Which, which stakeholder? So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about um, your thoughts on that. Well, sure. I mean, there are three um, stakeholders which could be deriving value from mobile health. The first would be the consumer, the second would be the providers, the health systems or the doctors, and the third would be payers, uh, health plans, or perhaps the federal government if it's Medicare or Medicaid. Or the employer. Uh, yeah, payers includes employers, absolutely. So when we think about value, um, my perspective is that if it's the employer or a health plan, the things that they're generally looking for usually focus on short-term medical savings. Whether the technology will actually keep people out of the hospital in the emergency rooms, because that's where the big healthcare dollars are. It's not in doctor's visits, it's not in laboratory tests. The big dollars are in hospitalizations. So if the mobile health technology can keep people out of the hospital, it might be interesting to payers. Otherwise, they're not that interested typically. To providers, meaning docs and integrated delivery systems, Pat, Generally, it's very hard to get doctors and hospitals to buy technology. They've just spent billions of dollars on EMRs for meaningful use. And now you want me to get M Health. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well, exactly right. And for hospitals and doctors, even though there is value-based purchasing with ACOs and all this, they're still really mostly in a fee-for-service model, and uh, a technology, unless it produces more patients or more referrals it really doesn't necessarily resonate with most health systems. So if it does produce more patient visits, perhaps. Uh, and then finally, to consumers, I divide the technologies into two camps, the things that are for wellness and fitness and well-being. That's most of That's them, most isn't of it? it? That's most of it. I think those are going to be consumer purchases, and the price point for these things like wearables and watches and bands and all, uh, the PricewaterhouseCooper recent survey suggested that people uh, don't want to pay, consumers don't want to pay a lot of money. In fact, uh, the price point at $100, I think only about a third of people would buy a device. And even if you give it away free, <laughs> Only two-thirds of people said they want a device. So it makes a real, a really a tough business model for people who are trying to sell to consumers, which is why when I talk to mHealth people, yeah. I say, well, who are your customers? Right. And they all say, oh, it's going to be the health plan. But, of course, you just explained why it's right. not going to be the health plan. Well, maybe not for the wearables and the uh, wellness stuff, but for the applications or the tools that, re that um, actually are lower cost, like telemedicine, where you can do a $49 doctor's visit via telemedicine versus going to see a doctor in their office where it might be 100 mm -hmm. Or for certain types of chronic care like heart failure, where we've shown you can keep people out of the hospital with remote monitoring scales and devices. Those are the kinds of things you might see payers pay for. The final thing is for consumers, I think there'll, there'll be a segment that will buy the wearables but they fatigue on them, they lose interest after a period of time. But if you can come up with a technology that meets a compelling need, so I talked about one today for type one diabetics, where the parents of kids can monitor their kids' sugars when they're at a sleepover or at a sports event, that is so powerful from a safety standpoint that I think consumers will pay much more for those types of things. Well, this has been fascinating, and our time together just went by uh, so quickly. I thought we would close just by a few words about um, Walgreens as a delivery system. And uh, so you've, you've, you've talked a little bit about this partnership with MD Live, but you also have clinics in your store. Right. I, I can go to the clinic in my store. They write me a prescription. I go and fill it at Walgreens. Right. They tell me I need to buy some supplies. I buy it at Walgreens. Right. And, and then the last thing is that if I behave myself and I weigh myself and I lose weight and do some other good things for 
for fitness, you give me some points, and what do I do with the points? Well, the points you can use for purchases in Walgreens or on our website for different goods. So we're trying to reward people um, uh, for healthy behaviors, walking, logging your weights, uploading your gl glucoses uh, if you uh, are a diabetic. And then we're adding some powerful tools to that ecosystem with uh, WebMD, which we're very excited about starting in a few months, where you'll be able to use digital health coaching to make it not just about walking and not just about logging weights, but really educating people about setting goals and behavioral change. Very excited about that as well. So this is uh, not your grandmother's Walgreens. This is really uh, Walgreens, the health company. So I want to thank you very much, Harry, for spending time with us. And I look forward to seeing what new things Walgreens rolls out in the future. Well, stop on by or visit us on your phone. <laughs>